Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's broadcast of the Aegis Vanguard League. We are a little bit delayed here, but we are starting off with our first draft of the night between Kekimo's Fanboys and Glacial Esports Yellow. My name is Gordo. I'm joined tonight by Nyarko. Nyarko, welcome to the AVL. We've got a great match coming up. Thank you so much for having me here. And yes, it's looking to be a banger here on President's Day today. A few things to note as we move into the drafting phase here. We're getting the first few bands coming through right now. But the side of Glacial Esports Yellow is starting off with two e-subs, which means that they will be losing bands throughout this first phase. We have PVX Royce taking up the top lane for them, as well as Sheikah Gaming on Jungle Duty. So be sure to make sure be sure to look out for them as we move deeper on into these games to see how this may impact the draft now when it comes to bans we have the bard and hecarim both knocked out on the side of kegamos fanboys glacial support has oftentimes played bard in the competitive lanes but is also a pretty notorious bard one trick just moving up the ladder just in general so squid sauce being knocked off that will be pretty impactful going forward same thing for this lux we see tribute to a kin who often favors these caster mage type mid laners getting one of their mains banned out here in the first phase and now look at this kegamos is going to be using their priority to start off with a pick of Zeri, who notably is a pretty good flex right now. She is not only being played in that bot lane AD carry role, but is also able to go into the hand of someone like Undead Falcons, the top laner for Kegamos, if they decide to go for a double marksman style play, or maybe even go for a mage there in the bot lane. Glacial the Yellow is going to respond right back this time with a Karma, obviously a pretty strong lane dominant support. We've been seeing a lot of Karma being played, not only in competitive levels, Levels, but also in solo queue Tyler one obviously using it as one of the champions to climb up to challenger This kind of means that we've been seeing it all over the rift recently And it looks like they're about to solidify their bot lane glacial is hovering Ezreal right now Yeah, happy to see the Ezreal bo karma bot lane coming on through for glacial yellow uh, It's gonna be soup fan and squid sauce playing as a duo down there They have played quite a bit of the Zeri already That's gonna have already been stolen away here by the side of Kagamo's fanboys Quick call out on the bands there from Glacial's side. Uh, yeah, they are going to be forfeiting those first three bands as a result of their emergency subs in the top and jungle positions. Reich and Sheikah Gaming going to be coming on in there in the top and jungle roles. Uh, and so they're going to lose those first three bands, just throwing them away on uh, random champions per the request of Kegamos fanboys, the Anivia and the Heimerdinger. We're never really in the consideration and are going to stay out of it here, but that is going to be the Ari and Jin lock-ins coming on through for the side of Kagemos fanboys. That pretty much guarantees it's going to be that Zeri heading towards the top lane here that Jin doesn't really have anywhere else to go, and that Ari going to be holding it down in the mid lane, facing off against the Zoe. We know that Kin loves this pick in the mid lane. It's played it four times already this season and is going to make it a fifth here. Yeah, Zoe obviously being picked in response to the fact that Vigorous One on the side of Kegamos is going to lock in that Ari, a hotly contested pick in professional play right now. Faker obviously has been popping off within the LCK with the newly updated iteration of this champion. Her ability to utilize these ultimate resets means that you have very aggressive engages combined with her charm that can easily help to start up fights even though she has before kind of acted more as a mobile backline to midline mage. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not the CC that comes out of Ari will be able to keep up with the performance that Tribute to Akin has been having on Zoe throughout the A throughout the AVL. That sleep is obviously a big big time value thing as well as paddle star just putting in so much damage spreading it throughout a team during a team fight going to be a really hotly contested mid lane as well as we move on into the second phase of bands that diana being one of the first things knocked out on the side of kegamo that is obviously a champion that has been massively dominant within the context of the jungle recently obviously kind of moving away from the mid lane in recent times towards that role and the camille also getting knocked out there just kind of covering the things that glacial had yet to select in turn rexai going to be picked from glacial yellow this is a champion that has been popping off honestly in the jungle role as well something that we've been seeing throughout all levels of play especially in the higher elos where the high tempo kind of style that she brings to the table and a really interesting gank paths are 
to have a premium put on them. And it looks like for the bottom link, Hegemos is going to get that Nautilus alongside the Jin. This is definitely something to watch out for if you're a Karma, someone who's relatively squishy but has a lot of power. Nautilus can tank that up and kind of be utilized as a big engage. And as we begin to move into the mid lane, the mid game as well, it'll be interesting to see how they dictate the tempo of a lot of these fights. Sejuani going to be the last pick. Definitely some tankiness on this back half of the draft for the Kegamos fanboys, which is very much needed given the fact that we have the Zeri and the Jin occupying two of the slots on the roster here. We are now looking out for this last pick. Glacial waiting just a little bit and looks like they're going to be locking in that set. Yeah, this they're hovering it at the very least here. Uh, if you're Chica Gaming here, locking in this Rek'Sai, makes a lot of sense uh, as something you probably got a lot of experience on from Solo Q. Reminder here that these last two picks are going to be for those E-subs, so they likely have not been practicing with the side of Glacial Yellow too much here. Going to just be going towards what they're more comfortable on. The set to face off against the Zeri top feels like it's going to be a rough matchup on paper. That melee into range discrepancy, always something that you got to be keeping your eyes on. At the very least, though, he's got that pit grit to stay regened up. Try to keep himself as safe as possible. The Rek'Sai, you know, a very powerful jungler in solo queue, as you alluded to there already. But uh, in, in competitive, has been seeing a little bit less use. A lot of that's because of how vulnerable it is, especially very, very early on. Level 1 especially. Tough to really get started on the Rek'Sai in 5-on-5 five five competitive. But the Sejuani lock-in here from the side of Kegamos, you know, that makes you feel pretty good here as Chica Gaming coming into this uh, this game number one. You're not likely going to get bullied too hard here at level one by the Sejuani. Uh, is a pretty solid level one comp here coming in from Kegamos, so they could definitely go for something. But, uh, you know, it, it's not as bad as it could have been, and Rek'Sai certainly going to have... Uh, Hope to have some opportunities here to at least complete her first clear and come on out to be that ganking force that she's destined to be. Yep, you know what they say, some things never change, and one of the things that don't change from solo queue all the way up to the highest echelons of play is that if you got a hook champ, if you got a tank like that Nautilus, you might be going for the invade. So these first few minutes will definitely be crucial to kind of setting the pace and tone of the game moving forward here. The Zeri obviously is something that I also want to touch upon as a potential flex. Obviously, Jin Top is very, very rare and most likely not going to be the case, but you definitely have experience from both Kegamos alongside Undead Falcons on that pick. Uh, Undead Falcons, though, is also someone who is notorious for the ranged top picks and someone who has a lot of experience playing that side of the range versus melee matchup within that lane. So. I am expecting that to be locked in and confirmed here in just a few seconds, and yep, that is Undead Falcons on Zeri. And so when I look at this map, when I look at who's going to be having Pryo, I think that as you alluded to here, Gordo, we're going to be seeing some pretty strong early lane in game dominance on the side of Kegamos fanboys, just because you have the Sejuani who has a pretty decent first clear tied up with champions that have the propensity and ability to get a lot of priority in their lanes, this will just allow for them to set the pace of the match early on. Now, obviously on the other side, you similarly have some champions that have chops in the early game, obviously. Zoe, for instance, has the ability to use Paddle Star on a wave, clear that really fast and prevent being shoved in too hard by the Ari. And in turn, you also have Karma down there in the bot lane, who with Mantra R is going to help Ezreal thin that wave pretty immaculately. But given the fact that they are going to be going up against that Nautilus, I imagine that they will be kind of happy passing that priority off to Kegamos, which in turn asks me the question, where is that Rek'Sai going to be pathing from? And given the fact that we have Glacial Yellow on this red side, I can see Rek'Sai starting that red buff top side of the map, moving down, looking for a play on the bot side, especially given the fact that Set is going to be in a little bit of trouble, especially early on. It's just a very difficult matchup for um, Roish to deal with against Undead Falcons up there. And so with that in mind, we could be seeing the jungler start on the opposite sides of the map and perhaps move themselves through um, to focus different lanes rather than we seeing counter ganks early we seen contestations for skull crabs early but i'm also wondering gordo what do you think about the early game dynamics from both of these teams 
Yeah, I think it's all going to rotate around here, this Zeri top lane. Going to be looking to push in the set, going to be looking to deny a whole bunch of CS. Going to, you know, be fishing for that solo kill if you can get it, if Royce isn't really comfortable playing up against that marksman in the top lane. Especially this one in particular with all the movement speed, all the additional attributes that she brings to the table. If you aren't ready to face off against those, uh, you know, we've seen certainly at plenty of levels of play that that Zeri is going to be able to take advantage of that matchup and get herself ahead there if left to her own devices. For that reason, I'm interested to see, like you said, where Shika Gaming wants to path. Uh, it feels like it's a natural fit to head towards the bottom lane if you're going to try to punish the, the, the Jin and the Nautilus who are naturally likely going to be pushing into this Ezreal Karma just a little bit. Uh, but also, you know, you have the burst to try to one-shot something like that Zeri. You have the CC to come on through from some kind of flash facebreaker from the set. Uh, and spinning that top lane matchup back around, getting pickups onto the Zeri early on can really tilt this game into Glacial's favor. They're already set up to kind of scale into the later game here really effectively with this Ezreal, who's just going to be safely farming in the bottom lane with the fact that they have a more true front line here uh, with that set, with that Rek'Sai. Uh, if they're able to get their way onto the back line, they're going to be able to one-shot them really, really effectively. Uh, and Ezreal should be able to keep himself safe from the likes of like a Nautilus Sejuani engage. Uh, assuming he doesn't let the re get on top of him uh but turning that top lane matchup uh really going to be critical for both of these teams here so i wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing both junglers try to path their way on up there and try to swing it early on top lane definitely going to be a point of contention and a point of focus as we move into this first round between kegomas fanboys and glacial esports yellow here in the avl I'm here with Gordo tonight, and we are currently just waiting on the spectator delay. So we'll be right back after a quick break, leading on into this first game. Make sure you guys don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody, to tonight's broadcast of the Aegis Vanguard League, where we have got Kagemo's fanboys facing off against Glacial Esports Yellow in a best of three here. Reminder, these squads are in the midst of a five-way tie for fourth here in their division. Want to be getting that top six here to make it into play-ins. Want to be avoiding that bottom two and getting eliminated and uh, going to two and two instead of one and three. Certainly going to be a big part of getting there when everybody is so close together in the standings. Yeah, this is a game with a lot on the line for both teams. And at this point, Glucial Globals has had to field two subs and hasn't really been able to get together their full coherent team for a while now. So this one being for so many of the Marvels, frankly, especially after talking to their leader and them saying that they want to take it all in this league, it'll be interesting to see how these solo queue players, these E-subs they have in the jungle and the top lane rules will interact and help to bring forward a victory for them. We had a bit of a clumping up there in the bot side, maybe looking for a late invade, but ultimately with everyone on the side of the uh, fanboys kind of deciding to just uh, five point it right there, we're ultimately not going to be seeing any drama. And it looks like my predictions starting to come true right here at the start of the game with a red buff start from both teams here this means that sheikah gaming will probably be looking to path down but at the same time it is important to keep note of the possible plays that could occur there in the top side of the map zari is probably going to be pushing in to roish and because of this rexai if the play allows may be looking to help and engage on the side of set a flash face break or something of that nature would definitely be valuable to get the ball rolling sheikah gaming obviously on a champion that needs to get that snowball started and speaking of snowballs we do begin to see this push start at the bot side of the map there's a few balls coming through as well the arcane comets hitting back and forth and some valuable trades coming through early on with that karma obviously being a source of great range for global yellow yeah definitely here as uh Sheikah's going for the full clear on his red side here is gonna possibly get spotted here by vigorous going for a little bit of an early invade gets that push in the mid lane takes that opportunity that priority to go and get a little bit of a spot out there on that rex side they did fake a leash in the bottom lane soup fan and squid sauce so Getting that perfect information on where exactly Sheikah is going to be super valuable here for the Kagamos fanboys. They know now for Kagamos and Ahum that they don't really want to uh, be pushing up too far here. They have to respect that Rek'Sai and be worried about what's going to come on out there. Sheikah going to go and steal away this bird camp here from their opponent. And we'll be feeling pretty good about that one. But Tragedy, knowing now that Rek'Sai has to be in the bottom side... Could be looking for maybe some kind of early dive play on the top lane. Does have that Aftershock jungler. You can manage to land that Arctic Assault. Will be really set up here, but it's instead going to go towards the mid lane. Nice little use on the chem tank, though, off a of minion. Going to give tribute to a kid a little bit of extra movement speed to escape. Will be able to just walk on away, even though got charmed. That charm showing a lot of presence in lane, though, going forward for Kegamos fanboys. Something to definitely note as the lane develops and plays out a little bit more. We also have the fact that the information that was gathered on the side of Kegamos from Vigorous... Oh, there may be a charm and a bit of action, though, in the mid lane right now as we get a return of Sejuani. Yeah, a lot of damage to tribute there, but... Still going to have that little bit of movement speed. Still going to be able to just move back on around. Avoid tragedy coming on in. Sheikah's now here just trying to help reset the wave. they got to be very careful here, though, about that Orb of Deception. Does a whole bunch of damage there. The tribute is low enough at this point that there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room. Is going to be able to escape there. Both the junglers just standing by. One hunting for a kill. The other trying to stop that one from going on down. Is going to end up being even here in the bottom lane. Squid Sauce getting engaged on by a hem. Tragedy has come on through. Spotted out by the ward. Squid Sauce could be forced to flash. Gonna get hit by the dredge line, though. Here comes Sheikah Gaming, though. Flashing on in. Gonna get that knockout. Meanwhile, Soup Fan finishes off on to a hem. Tragedy Strike's gonna fall on down as well. This is all coming up. Glacial Esports yellow as they turn around the play in the bottom lane. That may not be the play that we were talking about, but it certainly is a play that Glacial Esports Yellow wanted early on. Two kills going over to their side, going to the people you want to see them on as well. Rek'Side getting one and Ezreal getting the other. The fact that they also had the wave with them means that we're getting that first few sets of damage going down onto the tower bot side. But we do have some trades up here 
On the top as well, Royce getting a face breaker in Undead Falcons, training back just with Q spam. And the lane is coming back to a pretty even kill once again. But Tribute to a Kill is moving up into the area after getting a bit of priority, following Rek'Sai's assist to get that wave pushed in in the mid lane. A lot of dynamics starting to radiate throughout the entire map. And definitely a level of coordination coming out of Glacial Esports that you want to see, even with her substitute players this early on. Yeah, definitely. Great move by Sheikah there to counter that gank in the bottom lane. Has so much more damage in the early game. And Ahem just kind of overcommits in that bottom lane, too. Just taking a lot more damage than they bargained for there. Still just a little bit too squishy. And did opt for this Glacial Augment instead of the Aftershock on the Nautilus. So is really vulnerable to having a lot of return damage coming on through there. And that ends up paying off big time for the side of Glacial. Reich doing an alright job keeping himself farmed up in the top lane. Down about 10 here in that matchup up against a marksman. Going to be at least able to get himself that little siege minion there. But uh, we've seen in the trades, it's tough to play the set here in this matchup. But Pickrit is keeping him topped off or at least close to it. The choice to go for that Dorn shield early shows the amount of respect they're giving. But this is no longer respect as we get Rek'Sai moving up here into the top lane. Nice big pull in there from Roish, going to mean that that kill is going to be claimed there for the side of Glacial. Sheika cuts through the wall there, gets the cutoff, gets the kill picked up on the Valkans, even with both summoner spells used. Really good setup there from this duo. This is why they chose this Rek'Sai set setup up against the Zeri to really try to be able to bully it and set up for kills. That's the first one there, and another one coming in soon would be huge here for the side of Glacial Esports Yellow to really swing that top lane matchup the way they want it to. It, it's, it's a lead for Royce at this point, that 10 CS gap going to be neutralized by the kill. Yep, we saw that respect finally begin to pay off. The lane had bounced back at that point, starting to move towards the center. And due to that fact, Rek'Sai on, and Sheikah Gaming knew that that was the time to go in. Royce gets the face breaker when needed, gets the ultimate when needed, and ultimately manages to finish off Undead Falcons there in the top lane. Both summoner spells also going down. Falcons notably opting for the exhaust means it's going to take a little bit longer for them to get back to lane. And in turn, we have this movement on the bot side of the map. The coalescing of Glacial Esports Yellow there at the Dragon, and it looks like given the priority they have from that bot lane, there won't be much in the way of contestation there. This early stacking is really what you need on someone as volatile as the Rek'Sai, and the fact that you also are up 3-0 this early on means that Glacial is definitely able to fulfill a lot of their goals as we have some more action and trades in the top lane occurring. Pulled back in Falcons there, gets a fair bit of damage. Falcons gonna try to kite this one on out, use the superior movement speed and the superior range, try to get good trades in up against the set, but really just ends up coming out a bit negative. And pick grid again, gonna keep Royce way healthier than than Falcon here. So if he can find a good pathway in once Showstopper comes back up, could potentially start to look for a kill. There's one face breaker pulling away, or maybe pulling something up. That's gonna be the ultimate used by Zeri to try to get a little bit more distance, get a little bit more movement speed, getting that damage passed on through the minions. Royce now looking for the pull in, going to be able to get it, goes in for the Showstopper, looking for the solo kill, is gonna get it. That's four that to zero, literally towards the other. That was really well played there by Roish there, and now we have to see another play come down. Definitely the side of Kegamos wanting to make something happen there in the mid lane, but ultimately Sejuani going to show, but not much more of it. Meanwhile, top side of the map, we have set with a lot of prio over that lane, and in turn, the movement of Rek'Sai over towards that Rift Herald may mean that a second neutral objective is going to be going down pretty soon in favor, uh, in favor of Glacial Esports Yellow. Yeah, definitely here looking to get that one early and often and with all the prio they have in the top lane they should be able to claim that one pretty easily here tragedy strikes is on that side of the map but not really in a great position to go and challenge this oh top and mid are both recalled here for the side of glacial could be a little bit dangerous if tragedy strikes were to come on up there but just not going to happen instead the rift herald gets claimed easily enough by sheikah gaming now they're going to have that big purple crab to throw down in whatever lane they choose. Already two turret plates down in the bottom lane could come pretty close to picking up first turret gold. Yeah, there's a lot of juicy looking places to drop this Herald pretty early on into this game. Tempo being set very high and being set definitely in flavor of Glacial Esports this early on. We do have Roish sitting in front of a big wave here, but Sheikah Gaming coming into the area. Gonna tunnel over and it looks like we got the pursuit starting up here. 
Yeah, that's gonna be a nice little pickup there for Shika Gaming, going to finish off on the Undead Falcons there. So now there's a gank in the mid lane, Tribute was able to use the flash to avoid there on the Glacial Prison. Will be able to escape. And, uh, you know, just another big win there for Glacial Esports Yellow. They make the setup happen in the top lane. Uh, they pick up on Undead Falcons with or without the face breaker. They just have that flash on Burrow from Rek'Sai. And in the mid lane then, uh, just avoiding the ganks definitely there from the side of Tribute. Tribute playing that really calmly, really fantastically, even after we witnessed Sejuani's ult coming out. This kind of patience is allowing for a big lead to begin to stack, not only in terms of kills, but in terms of gold. About 3k now going over to the side of Glacial Esports Yellow. And with the fact that we have a dragon spawning in less than two minutes, it'll be very, very difficult for the side of Kegamos to actually attempt to contest this. In turn, the stacking of dragons, and depending on what we see revealed as soul, will lead to a really high tempo game that will definitely favor the side of champions like Set, like the Rek'Sai, because you have the ticking time bomb on the bot side. Ezreal obviously been able to free farm, especially after that advantage early, but free farm not anymore as the fight begins. Yeah, Sheikah going to be able to go on a killing spree there as they finish off onto a hem. Now looking to collapse onto Tragedy. Not going to be able to get out of there either. Soup Fan picks up his second kill off the back of that one. Rift Herald goes into that bottom lane. They are looking to get that first turret of the game. Only two minions left alive, but they should be able to get this one without too much trouble. Might just have to wait an extra second for the charge. That's going to be first turret gold going over to the side of Glacial Esports. Yellow taking full control over the map of 6k gold. Undead Falcons trying to get something back in the mid lane. Moving forward onto Tribute. Doesn't get the ult on anybody. Doesn't get enough movement speed to keep chasing. The damage turnaround from Tribute is really effective here. That's going to be the Prey Seeker landed there from Sheikah. No ulti available, but Undead Falcons has to head for the hills anyway. And the True Shot Barrage across the map picks up another kill there from the side of Duke fan. Duke fan aiming that perfectly there and now really setting an emphatic message over to the side of Kegamos. Glacial Esports may have had to give up some of those picks early. They may have had to give up some of their time in the game. But in turn, look what they're getting out of this. 8-0 now for them and an immense momentum going forward. The fact that you don't have that turret on the top or bot side now means that the second rise of the Rift Herald and this dragon spawning in less than 8 seconds means that you're getting another set of neutral objectives placed firmly into the palms of Glacial Esports Yellow. Definitely something you want to see. Ezreal's beginning to come online. 3-0 now that Essence Reaver fully built for him and a stacking tier means that he's well on his way to becoming the dominant monster that they need him to be. Now, we have a little bit of hovering in the area, but that's not really going to turn into much of a fight. Rek'Sai now pretty huge with that Prowler's Claw build just means that their ganks are going to be ever more effective. What do you think, Gordo, that they're going to have to do on the side of Kegamos to try to get back into this? Yeah, I mean, definitely a bad situation to be in there for on the side of Kegamos. You know, their their carries still have, have managed to farm nicely. They don't have any of the kill gold that the carries on the side of Glacial do, but if they can get those set up, you know, they still have all of this pick potential with Tragedy Strikes and a Hem. They still have the damage from Vigorous and Kegamos. They can still go for a pick-focused strategy this entire composition aside from Zeri, and even with Zeri, given how fast she moves, uh, is really set up to be able to make those picks happen. The problem is how mobile Tribute and Superfan are, and how effectively Squid Sauce will be able to get them out of dodge. Uh, but catching them alone, catching them on rotations, that's certainly got to be the goal at this point, because this Zeri lane has completely failed here. Undead Falcon... He's facing off against Holebreaker set at this point. He's down on levels. He's down on gold. He is not winning this lane. Uh, and in the one-on-one -on -one matchup now, he is just so supremely behind that the pick is just not panning out. Oh, the is that turn. going to be an ultimate channeled by a hem there? Trying to get a little bit of a pick there onto Soup Fan. In comes Rek'Sai from the side, but it looks like they're just going to be forced to back away. But, oh, look at that trade on the Falcon. Just not going his way at all. They're going in for the Showstopper. Going in for the solo kill here. Flash is in with the Haymaker, and Roish gets the solo kill. And while the drama diffuses there in the mid lane after what looked to be an engage, we just got to turn to the top side of the map, and it's just continuing now as the rest of Kegamos come to try to shut down the set. Yeah, Roish probably going to fall on down here, but he's already trading one for one. The rest of the team could make something happen elsewhere on the map. He's still staying alive with the pick grit. Finally, they're going to donate the kill over to Vigorous. 
Glacial Esports yellow, though. They didn't get any damage on the mid turret. They stole away the blue buff, but other than that, didn't get too much done. Although Kegamos has to be careful not to get caught on out here. Sleepy Trouble Bubble going to land. This should be a one shot. Tries to flash away. The ulti from Ezreal doesn't land, but it doesn't need to, as that's a clean one shot there from Tribute. And that's what happens when the E hits. Zoe, not even at one item yet. Just a lost chapter and able to get that one shot down onto the AD carry. That's what playing a marksman in 2022 is like as a big fight starts up in the mid lane. Yeah, Glacial Prison lands on a Rek'Sai, forces him to use the ultimate, is going to end up going on down. Blink forward from Soup Fan, but maybe tunneling a little too hard on the Zeri, going to end up going down to Tragedy. Trade back comes on through, though. Tribute still has plenty of damage for the both of them, is going to finish off that kill onto Tragedy, takes the Sejuani out of the fight of him, is far too low now, and Kegamos already suffered a little bit of PTSD from seeing the Zoe last time, not going to be willing to step up too close, he's going to instead just throw on down the ultimate. Hem is over the wall. Tribute does not know that he's here, but could kill him with a skill shot over. Any amount of vision on that side of the map would have spelled doom for a hem right there. Just a little bit too low to ever withstand a fully charged Zoe Q right there. But instead, Tribute to Kinj is going to be moving to the top side, pushing out that wave, getting a little bit of priority as we do have a second Herald here spawned on the top side of the map. Rek'Sai making a beeline right to it. Definitely here. That's going to be Rift Herald. Started on up here by Sheikah Gaming. Has the backup of a couple of teammates. Probably not even going to need it. As Sejuani does not feel safe stepping up a pass to the middle of the map. And uh, just pushing in. Coming on here from Soup Fan. Reich possibly going to find Vigorous. Vigorous knows that something's up though. Just going to use the orb to check it out. Yeah, and here we have the Cloud Soul being the one confirmed via the changes that we see on the map right there. Undead Falcons, obviously, on Zeri would love to be able to partake in that soul, that movement speed being so valuable on them, as well as Vigorous. But given the fact that we already have two of those dragons being taken up by the side of Glacial Esports Yellow, I think that it is pretty much said and done that it will be a hard-fought battle from here on out. But Shiga Gaming getting punched down quite a bit by that range from the Zeri. Yeah, tough, uh, tough 1v1 there to fight out for the Rek'Sai. If you're not the one getting the jump on the Zeri, then probably not a lot of recipes for success there. Doesn't have the flash to close the gap. Not close enough to use the Prowler's Claw. Just going to have to slither on out of there with the use of the tunnel. But we'll be happy. We'll be stealing away jungle camps. We'll be able to recall, get more items, still be comfortable in their 8k gold lead that they've developed for themselves here. Setting up for the next dragon here in just about 20 seconds see already all the members of Glacial are looking to collapse in on this. Kagamos fanboys, they might be forced to just give this one up, though. They're so far down on gold, and this isn't the soul point. This might not be the place where you take your fight. As Tribute has found the pick here. The sleep does not last long enough, though. Vigorous gets the spirit rush, avoids the paddle star, avoids the true shot barrage. The oh, fact that we're all so scared and another E gonna land this time, but if we're going to get the kill coming through, Tribute to Akin finally gonna be able to land that Q onto the Slippery Ari. As I was going to say, the fact that every single time we have Supan launching out that ultimate means, and we all kind of tense up, shows the amount of presence and damage that this team has, even when things don't connect. Supan commanding so much space and presence on the team, and he's not even the one who is the most fed, frankly. Yeah, definitely not there, but Tribute still making the one-shots work on out, continuously finding himself in these isolated positions where he could just pick up the kills easily there. Vigorous dives with Flash up, can't really uh, manage to get themselves out of dodge in time, and the max range paddle star enough to get the one-shot through. Now full control over this bottom side jungle, getting gained here by Glacial, keeping the mid-prio up, keeping the side lanes pushed in. They control the entire map, and they are definitely making Kegamos fanboys feel it. Mm -hmm. We get so many wards throughout the entirety of the map here on the side of Glacial Esports. They're able to move that vision line so far up and just interfere with a lot of plans on the side of Kegamos. But at the same time, we have some light here coming through. Everyone is at least on first item besides the Nautilus. And hey, you know what they say about gold on supports. Um, 
with that in mind, some of the selections here are pretty interesting on both sides. One of the things to note is the fact that we had that whole breaker rush onto Roish on the side of Glacial Esports. And obviously now they have secured their Mythic in the form of Gore Drinker. But this rush is something that we've been seeing a lot. The gold efficiency present on Hole Breaker as an item when you have no other allies around you just makes it such a fantastic piece of tech for champions like Zed and other bruisers to lock into early on in this game and you can kind of see this coming to fruition here on the bot side of the map you have vigorous who has the rain advantage here range advantage here just having to stay a little bit far back because they know that a face breaker basically spells instant death there's no real contestation for a set this far up and in speaking of contestation we got a fight here in the mid lane yeah, Collapse coming through onto Tragedy Strikes. Is tanky enough to be able to stay alive? Also resisting the slows there with the passive. But Trivium just gets the one shot. Doesn't even need the damage amp. Meanwhile, Squid Sauce getting picked on up there by a nice little engage from Vigorous. But Vigorous is going to get turned back on. Nice little flash play from the Rex side. Going to keep him knocked up. Going to keep him dead. Going to be a three for one trade here. And now with Rift Herald thrown down in the mid lane, it's going to be great. Actual esports yellow looking to keep the push going, looking to get another one here. As that's going to be Undead Falcons looking for an engage on a tribute to a kin over the wall. Not going to be able to keep any chases coming on through. And now the Baron is getting looked at here by Glacial Esports. There's not going to be anybody there to contest it on the side of Kegamos. Roish is already pushing in the bot lane, taking inner turrets for himself. And this is going to be Baron for the side of Glacial. And we have a sleep land onto the Zeri ultimate coming out from Zoe trying to reach, but it looks like they're going to land the Q onto another member of Kegamos. Teleport coming down here. And while we do have an execute, that Baron Nasher is going to be killed in return. First Baron of the game going to land onto the side of Glacial Esports Yellow. And although Rek'Sai may have died for their efforts, that is a lot of people that you want to see with a Baron buff on them. That gigantic Zoe in the mid lane playing alongside the other members of the team, the Karma, the Ezreal will just be a huge push through the mid or frankly wherever they want to go meanwhile set already showing incredible split pushing prowess taking that inner turret on the bot side of the map probably rotating up here to the top now to take down that last inner from Kegamos means that you have an unstoppable force colliding into the side of the blue team here and i don't really see much of a way out of it especially as we're only about a minute away from what is frankly soul for the side of glacial esports as well yeah that that execute is made a little worse by royce teleporting to the baron to try to prevent the execute uh, as now he's getting collapsed on here. Not that the teleport would have saved him, but not having it once he respawns might make a difference here. Sheikah, though, going to get a nice little engage on Undead Falcon. Just one shots him there with the Rek'Sai side damage. Has so much available now with two lethality items already completed. Vigor is going to go on down to Royce there. His tragedy is now in a one versus four. Going to fall down pretty easily as well. The gold is so big of a lead here for Glacial Esports Yellow. They dominate the top lane fight in the four versus three and now are set up to continue on this siege as they've got themselves only two opponents on the map once again what a huge turn for glacial esports yellow there in that fight we had royce almost looking like he was being caught out right there but unless you're able to burst down and set and frankly that's a pretty tall task especially with one with two completed items being four and one it means that it got the time for the rest of glacial esports to get into the area and knock down a lot of the big players on the side of kegamos and in turn knock down this top side inhibitor huge plays coming through and now we have sheikah gaming over there waiting for that dragon to spawn we may have a bit of drama here on the top side though as it looks like a, the rest of glacial is continuing to stay up there yeah ahem goes on down there to a little pick from tribute looks like the flash was expended to be able to pick that one on up is going to take the nautilus off the rift that's going to be another sleep landed on to zeri tribute just does not miss with these is over the wall here comes soup fan looking to get a nice little snipe there with arcane shot tragedy trying to take the one versus one meanwhile dragon soul goes on down everything is coming up glacial esports yellow all over the map they've got their soul they've got another pick right as a hem is respawning they've got the siege coming in with their baron minions onto the base and they're going to claim themselves some inhibitors it is going to be more than an uphill struggle from here on out. It will take a freaking miracle for Kegabos to come back here. And the momentum that they have established on the side of Glacial Esports may mean that they just might try to go for the end here as a big fight starts to come through.
Yeah, soup fan taking a whole bunch of damage there from the Ari, but managing to stay alive. Tribute goes legendary as he picks up another kill there onto the side of Undead Falcons. Zero, one and eight here on the Zeri. Not tanky, cannot survive up against this Zoe burst. The final inhibitor going to fall on down. Now this is going to be the last stand here for Tecmo's fanboys. They throw on down the depth charge. They get the knockup on the Sheikah Gaming, but they aren't able to follow it up with anything. That's going to be True Shot Barrage fired on across the team. Vigorous goes low. Tecmo's getting engaged on by the side of Royce. A big haymaker comes on across everybody. They're forced back into the fountain. And that means it's free reign onto the base. This is going to be Glacial Esports Yellow picking up game number one. And that was about as clean as you could ever hope here. 4 to 23 being the final score. A massive, massive gold gap as well here in this game. I think we're going to be seeing quite a few interesting bands coming through next game. Kagabus Fanboy is going to have to do something about that monstrous Zoe that they created in that mid lane. Tribute to Kin just not missing those sleepy trouble bubbles. Able to continuously get these picks off at the start of fights and even throughout the duration of the entire game. As Lichbane was also picked up allowing for a lot of fantastic spell weaving and damage to be put upon there and this isn't even to talk about the other huge players that we saw coming out of glacial esports yellow royce in that top lane getting those solo kills onto zeri early making that matchup look like it's favored for the big boy up there those are all things that are super necessary to come through with a win that quickly and with such dominance yeah, definitely. Uh, and, you know, Glacial, they really swung this game super early. They knew what they had to do to be able to get themselves ahead. Once you start snowballing on the wreck side, she gets so much, so much stronger. And, you know, they make a play in the bot lane, uh, or Tragedy attempts to make a play in the bot lane, rather. It gets turned around there by Sheikah, so now bot lane's ahead for the side of Glacial. Uh, then they try to make a play top lane. Once again, this gets turned around by Sheikah. Sheikah gets the engage on Undead Falcon, picks up the first kill of that lane uh, for their top laner. And at that point... Glacial Esports Yellow, they're winning in both side lanes. The ball's in their hands, and they don't let go of it for the entirety of the game. They just continue to run away with the rest of the game. They get a lot of really nice Zoe picks off of the lead that they're able to get on the map. They set down their vision. They abuse that vision and that control to get more picks with the Zoe. Uh, and, you know, just a really clean game all around there. You said it yourself. From Glacial Esports Yellow, uh, certainly going to be look to, looking to repeat a performance like that. Uh, can't even tell that they're coming in with two E-subs at this point. Uh, looked really well coordinated from the entire squad. Yeah, and as we said before, for those of you just joining, we actually haven't been able to see Glacial Esports Yellow's full roster play at any point during this split so far. And if this is how they're going to continue to play with their subs, I think that they got a bright future ahead of them. But looking at the series as it stands right now, I think that there is still a clear path to victory going forward for the side of Kegamos fanboys. They obviously see that there is a lot of propensity for early game dominance coming out of people like Sheikah Gaming, who notably is one of these e-subs, and maybe it might be the case that they will utilize their advantage that they have with the bands going forward um, to kind of push out and push away some of these early game junglers and top laners. Maybe look for a comp that where they can take the driver's seat to an earlier earlier on maybe they could try to stack those neutral objectives and put the the side of glacial esports onto a scaling comp where maybe the cracks in the coordination between the main roster and the e-subs might come through a little bit more clearly absolutely here we're gonna throw it to a quick break while we get into draft for game number two but don't go anywhere we're gonna be right back so we see if uh, Glacial Esports Yellow are going to claim this one in two, or if Kagamos fanboys are going to be able to fight back and take us to game three. Everybody, panic. Hold on. <laughs> I'm about to say something really cool. Three, 41, nine, and lift off! No one dies screaming without me. I feel like I forgot to shoot something. You're starting to bore me. Such a loser, always ready to cry. Da, 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 da. Ah, come on. What's the worst that could happen?
Welcome back, everybody. It turns out that break was a lot shorter than we anticipated as we are getting right back into picks and bans here. Gagamos fanboys staying on the blue side. Glacial Esports Yellow staying on the red and going to be looking to have a repeat of their performance before. Reminder, due to the two e-subs they have here in the top lane and the jungle, Glacial Esports are going to be losing all of their phase one bans. Yeah, and in turn, they're going to be banning out the Heimerdinger and Nivea, two nonsensical ones for those of you just turning in, something that was done at the behest of Kegamos fanboys there. And we, I originally, I thought we were going to see the Salty Randback come through from Kegamos, but instead, they are going to be taking out that Zoe that was just so powerful on the side of Tribute to Akin in Glacial Esports last round through. And in turn, we're also getting a bit of alteration there in the jungle, going from the Sejuani over to the Hecarim, Strategy strikes maybe looking to snowball a little bit more on their own instead of being that frontline tank for the team. Glacial, on the other hand, going to use this opportunity to snap up the Rek'Sai once more. Sheikah Gaming showing so much of a propensity to just set up plays in Rek's face across the map, especially there in that early game, allowing for the carries to really, truly get ahead for them. And instead of getting Zeri on the side of Kagamos, Glacial is going to snap that one up as well, originally going to the top lane on the side of Undead Falcons, which didn't really fare too well. We're going to see if Glacial will be able to have a better crack at that hyperactive AD carry slash top slash mid slash bruiser slash marksman champion. Yeah, definitely here. I, I expect that the on Glacial side, the Zeri is going to be for soup fan. I've already played it twice in this league uh, and is something a little bit more in their wheelhouse. They're going to be pretty comfortable on that one. Uh, is that's going to be the Ari now locked in for the side of Glacial as well. So tribute to Akin has the Zoe taken off the board is going to be able to just default right back to that Ari. The Zillion Hecarim combo, though, drafted here for the side of Kegamos. That is going to be a spicy one coming on through a fast horse, running into your back line, getting all that bonus AD from the Zillion movement speed and being able to be res back on up later. Definitely a scary combination, especially with this Gwen as well. Some great targets there for the Chrono Shift if they're able to get set up for it effectively. Now we got to wonder, is this going to be the mid lane Zillion or is this going to be the support Zillion? Zillion, definitely a flex pick that has been seen in both roles. I think we've actually been seeing a lot more mid Zillion picks, especially in high level play recently. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that you have the ability to put so many other diverse champions up there against the Ari in the mid lane, such as the Victor, which notably is one of those really strong champions that's still open, as well as a Corky, we might be seeing the Zillion actually go down there in the support role on the side of Kegabus fanboys this time around. I also do not pity the fool who decides to go with Zillion into the Ari, that it seems like a pretty difficult matchup given the ability for Ari to continually duck and weave, move well across the field and get out of the way of your bombs, especially as we move post level six. But also at the same time, if we get enough finesse out of Vigorous and their utilization of WQ, we could be seeing that lane turn for the better in favor of Kegamos. Meanwhile, we're continuing that theme of champion flipping here. Ezreal now on the side of Kegamos fanboys. And with that Seraphine, we are actually still kind of up in the air as to who the support is going to be. Gordo, Zillion or Seraphine, who are you picking as your support? I think it's Zillion's support. I, I don't know if that would be my personal choice. Uh, I think I like Zillion a little bit better in the mid lane these days, but uh, Ahem has already played the Zillion support. Vigorous has already played the Seraphine mid twice. I, I think it, given the team that we're watching, I think it's safe to say that it's Seraphine mid and Zillion support at least, the, or, or that's just what they want us to think. And that's what they want Glacial Esports Yellow to think. As that Sona being hovered, gonna be swapped to Lulu at the very last moment. So knowing they're up against this Enchanter bot lane, they see an opportunity to pick an Enchanter for themselves. Lulu and Zeri are really powerful duo in and of themselves. Lulu can speed up Zeri with that Whimsy, which is already what Zeri's looking to do. Can also give over that shield. Zeri scales with shielding, gets that bonus damage from shielding, converts it through her own passive definitely going to be feeling good to have that one and now the yone in the top lane that's a spicy one to face off against this gwen uh going to be a, a carry v carry matchup in the top lane always something we want to keep our eyes on yeah, and looking at how these drafts have panned out, I really think that some of these hot spots that we talked about in the last game, that top lane, that mid lane, are going to continue to come through. We are going to be seeing a lot of action up there 
with Gwen versus Yone. Yone as a champion that is just looking to duel but also has great scaling potential is going to mirror a lot of the same strengths that come out of Gwen. Now obviously the soul body that Yone does have and the ability to kind of get in on a champion that is often reliant upon uh, their Hallowed Mists in the form of their W to prevent damage there may mean that Gwen might have a little bit of a difficult time especially early on and in turn that will allow for more priority for that Rek'Sai. Sheikah Gaming so happy to be back on that comfort pick I imagine and now that you're once again looking at the ability to scale in some lanes and pop off early in others this is the same kind of dynamic that Glacial is happy to draft and even though they were down those three bands I still think that they may be coming out ahead here just in the ability for them to act upon what has clearly been shown to be their optimal game plan yeah i agree with that and, and you know i i brought this up before this season already uh back in week number one when we were also uh witnessing a matchup where somebody had been losing bands uh i think it was week one at least regardless in drafting when one team is losing bands is really its own kind of skill it's a separate kind of draft environment than the one that you're really used to uh and you know whether you're on blue or red side whether you're the team losing bands or the team facing off against lost bands you kind of have to adapt uh to that situation uh, and try to draft in order to get yourselves kind of more power picks than you're used to being on the board i feel like hegemos kind of fumbled that in draft number one where you know they get the zeri on the first pick but then their second rotation is the Jin ari after they've given up the ezreal karma it's not like this crazy super powerful setup that they've got for themselves full of broken champions this time around they get the hecarim they get the gwen both pretty powerful picks and then this zillion you know not at the top of everybody's meta tier lists but very good as a pairing with those other two and a pick that ahem is really comfortable playing on a to boot so feel like they came out of things a little bit better this time around uh, they've got themselves some uh, powerful champions across the board they still managed to get a solid 80 carry in Ezreal even though the pick pool got fairly pinched there with the Jinx and Caitlyn bands uh, feel a lot better about their draft this game than I did in the game number one yeah, Kegamos definitely have a lot of outs here. They have the ability to get a snowball rolling in, the ability to sustain massively through team fights. Gwen has the ability to truly 1v5 a game, and it doesn't hurt to say that she probably won't be having to 1v5 given the fact that you have Zillion Revive, you have Seraphine continuously providing those shields with the W, especially if we see the full Enchanter build of Moonstaff onto her. Um... But at the same time, I do think that the selection of Seraphine is one that I want to contend with here just because it allowed for Glacial to go with such a powerful enchantress in the form of Lulu there as the final pick of the match. You knew that after the Yone was locked in that you weren't going to be able to see what the support matchup was going to look like. And I kind of wanted something a little bit more proactive, something that can match and play along with the Hecarim to keep people in place, to keep people shut down on the side of Glacial in order for Gwen to really do a lot of damage. And obviously Seraphine does have her R, she does have Empowered Beat Drop to try to pick off people here, but those are all but those are both skill shots. Those are both things that will require immaculate pacing and immaculate spacing on the side of Kegamo's fanboys. And I'm not really sure if that will be something that they're going to be able to pull off, especially given the fact that Glacial still maintains so much mobility on their side. Whimsy speeding people up as you talk about Goro, but also just the inherent maneuverability out of Zeri and Ari means that Seraphine is going to have a lot on her plate in attempting to try to get her ultimate off and get a big enough charm on the enemy team for a real wombo combo to come through. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. The Seraphine feels like a whiff in this draft. Uh, you know, this is the, the Seraphine's been effectively shut down, I think, by a lot of aspects of this game here. Uh, first of all, yeah, you're not going to see these members of Glaive grouping up for an ulti very often. This is a super mobile team comp from the side of Glacial. They're not going to be all getting together in a line. Uh, certainly, at least they shouldn't be, given, uh, you know, they've got Rek'Sai and Yone and Ari, all who want to come in on the flanks. The Zeri's supposed to be super fast and also really wants to be coming in on those flanks, skating over walls and such. Uh, shouldn't really have a lot of opportunities to land those multi-man encores. Additionally, Kagamos' own team comp 
don't really want to be grouping up too close together either. Ezreal's going to be looking to spread apart. Gwen and Hecarim are going to be looking on flanks, getting sped up by the Zillion. You're not going to be able to get those big AoE shields off. You're not going to be able to get, you know, you're probably going to go Shirelia's with this composition, try to set up for a big engage from the Hecarim, but that's probably only going to be on a couple of people. On the other hand, though, the other enchanter they've drafted for themselves, this Zillion, feels like it's very effective against the Glacial Esports yellow composition. These is a team comp with three assassins on it. They want to dive into your backline. They want to pick somebody off. They want to zero them out. And if you res them back up with Zillion, some of these members of Glacial, they can get in, but they can't really get out. The Yone, the Rexa, uh, the Yone, if he's not using the Soul Unbound, the Rexai in pretty much all situations. Once they're in, they're stuck in there. And if they aren't actually getting the kill that they dove onto, because of Chrono Shift, that's going to be a big opportunity to punish there for the side of Kekimos. And as we are now within the client draft, I do want to note that we are getting confirmation that it's in fact going to be the opposite of what we first expected. Ahem is going to be on that zillion in the support role, Vigorous One taking Seraphine into the mid lane, but I'm not really sure about that matchup into the Ari. Obviously, Seraphine is a champion with not a lot of mobility that is really looking to sit back as kind of an artillery mage, use that long range poke to take down champions. But Ari, as we said before, that maneuverability and tribute to Akin's frankly fantastic positioning might mean that there might be a little bit of a struggle there and even though I very much like the fact that you're getting the zillion paired up with the Ezreal for the mid game and you're still going to be getting all of the benefits that come from having a zillion and Hecarim on the same team even with the less income that Ahem is going to be able to get within that role I still am unsure about the point and role of the Seraphine going forward here if it is the case that they fail to get good engages going yeah, definitely agree here. Uh, it, it's going to be a rougher situation for the Seraphine. At least she's going to be able to wave clear really effectively uh, and, and try to keep that Ari from being able to roam around the map. Ari going to be wanting to get this Yone ahead, going to be wanting to get this Zeri Lulu lane ahead as well. As Real and Zillion should be able to do a just fine job of keeping themselves at a safe distance. Uh, once again, though, it's, it's really that top lane that I want to keep an eye at. I expect Chica to look to path towards Roish once again to try to get him ahead here on this Yone to try to shut down this Gwen, who's going to be taking a little while to scale. Tragedy Strikes should be heading up towards there as well to try to turn that matchup around. This Ezreal, you know, kind of neutralizes the lane from both sides, isn't usually a pick that you expect to be pathing to towards heavily. With that said, we're going to throw it to a quick break here while we get loaded up into the game. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with game number two.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Aegis Vanguard League, where we are here with Game 2 of Kagamos Fanboys facing off against Glacial Esports Yellow. Glacial Esports, despite their two emergency subs, have been able to come on out here and have a fantastic game number one. This time, they're going for an even spicier team comp. They're running back the Rek'Sai, but they're busting out the Zeri. They're busting out the Ari for themselves, and they got the Yone in the top lane as their counterpick to this Gwen, looking to just try to stampede through this game early and hard. Yone, an aggressive pick kind of reflected in the fact that we're seeing the Doran's Blade coming out of Roish this time. A lot more confident. I mean, obviously they managed to do a lot on the set, even with a Doran shield early on last game. But this is definitely a statement on both sides that they want to fight early and they want to fight hard. Doran's also on the side of Gwen and notably they decided to go Ghost Ignite. Um, and rather than the more common Ignite Teleport here, which speaks to me that they are looking to chase, that they are looking to utilize the first few levels to the maximum potential. Obviously, Gwen's ability to empower her um, auto attacks with her E, as well as just pump out a lot of true damage to a Snip Snip, both going to be really important against Yone in the early game. Um, but we are going to be seeing a jungle clear that is going to mirror at least in the beginning what we saw on either side of the map last time around rexai going to get leashed by roish in the top lane strategy strikes clearing out their own red as well here and this means that we are still going to be able to get the potential for an early game top lane or a path towards the bot side of the map for the side of Glacial's jungler. And one of the things that I want to note here is the difference that we may be seeing a little bit in terms of wave clear here. Zillion obviously is going to a degree inadvertently always help shove the wave and get priority on the bottom side of the map for Kegamos. And the fact of the matter is that even if you manage to land your bombs away from the wave, if you have someone on the side of Glacial pick them up and walk towards the wave, you're going to be getting that push. And in turn, you're going to be on, you're going to have to be a little bit more vigilant for the ganks going forward here. But as I say all that, we do get that first wave push to tower by Squid Sauce and Soup Fan there on the side of Glacial here, then taking priority over the lane to start off. Yeah, definitely a good start for them here facing off, you know, double range versus double range bot lane. These guys are going to be contesting for control over that wave, get the angles to get the poke in that they want to. And uh, so far, that's been coming on up towards the side of Glacial, but we'll be keeping a close eye on that lane as the game continues. Sheikah, though, on the early invade, going to catch out Tragedy, who's trying to do two camps at once, going to lose a lot of health for that one, going to have their blue buff stolen away as well, as Sheikah gets it with the smite, now calling over Roish, looking for the 2v2, soul unbound over the wall, not going to be able to get the execute damage, actually does go through, sneaks their way back into the mist to be able to finish that one on off, and now Tragedy getting chased back over the wall here by the side of Tribute. Tribute not going to want to commit the flash for that one, but that's going to be first blood to the side of Glacial, and this whole Whole top side jungle gonna get picked up by Sheikah. A huge start for the Rek'Sai once again. That confirming smite onto the blue buff, allowing Sheikah to get that fight basically at full health, put so much burden on the backs of Kegamos. And frankly, I think that they are lucky in how well they played it out from then on out. Tragedy spikes meaning making it out alive with their own life with vigorous rotating into the area means that the bleeding is stopped for a little bit. But that CS difference in the jungle and the priority that we see is going to be a huge burden going forward. Kegamos going to have to play a little bit more vigilant have to play a little bit more back and just ensure that they're continuously able to rotate as hecarim goes down a level yeah definitely a rough start here for the horse going to at least be able to get themselves that bottom scuttler but that's worth very very little xp as the first one as of this season uh like less than a range minion i'm pretty sure actually so not going to be doing a lot to get back up in the xp difference here going to have to path very carefully here you don't want to have another run in with the Rek'Sai now as uh, you're set so far behind and Chica already has gotten a recall here has picked up the serrated dirk meanwhile tragedy strikes wasn't able to get any items at all with their time as of yet definitely a rough position to be in but so far just getting himself back into it getting back onto the clear going to be looking for an angle here you got to believe pretty soon also expended the ghost though to be able to escape from that play in the jungle going to be one of their main gank tools now disabled as well uh, meanwhile the first blood gold did go over to Royce in the top lane he was already the stronger champion in that early laning phase now even more so facing off against undead falcons with no summoners 
Yeah, there's so much to talk about here in terms of the ramifications of just that single invade. We are getting Hecarim moving onto the Ari in the mid lane right there, forcing the flash out of tribute to Akin. But that top lane is definitely ripe for the picking. Royce, knowing that he can play aggressive, he has that teleport just in case he has to back. And Ooh. speaking of aggressive, we've got to play down here in the bot side. All right, the flash from Ahem does not really do anything, but is going to survive nonetheless. Soup fan finds a nice little angle there to skate on in there with the rush going to be able to force three summoners out there. Kogomos uses the flash, Ahem uses the flash and the ignite. All of those now not going to be available in the bottom lane. They choose to take a fight here in a little bit. Chica fully expect to start pathing down towards the bottom lane given that fact and knowing that these summoners are not going to be available and that they should have such a great opportunity now to go aggressively and now nice freeze coming on through here from the side of soup fan without those summoners available ahem and kegamos do not feel safe going up to farm so they're just going to get denied a whole bunch of xp here as long as they keep it here they need to call the jungler to help Hegemos and Ahem opting to back here in the face of that freeze does mean that we get some crucial items flowing over to Ezreal and Zillion, which may help them in their attempts to break this freeze going forward. But Soupfan and Squid Dance just so happy with the way that that lane is panning out. Deciding to actually push that wave in, and we have an Ooh. ultimate coming here on the top side of the map. All right, a little bit over aggressive there from Roy. Sees that his jungler's coming on in, but ends up taking too many turret shots. Goes on down despite the snap back. Ahem goes up top, picks up the kill there on to Sheikah Gaming on the rec side. Two kills picked up there for the side of Kegamos fanboys. One of them very importantly going over to the Gwen. It's going to be a great setup here to get Undead Falcons back on into the game. And they call it a cheese strat when supports roam topside on first pack. Hey, that was a perfect play. Great rotation. Kegamos getting a much needed little victory there. Two kills to their name. A lot of priority there topside. But at the expense of what? Ahem being gone from the lane means that we get this continual push from the side of Glacial Esports Yellow and a back with a and a back with the ability to kind of return to lane has a little bit of an item advantage with berserker's greaves already completed on the zeri and the ability to perhaps contest and push for this first dragon that has now spawned yeah definitely here great play by ahem they realize that you know they're getting frozen on in the bottom lane they're gonna have to take the recall anyway might as well head up towards bot lane reads the play gets the punish there on Sheikah. Now as they're setting up in the bottom lane, they're going to go for the push this time. Instead, they want to be able to get that dragon, as you were saying here. It looks like they are going to be able to get their members over there, at least to start it off, Nyarko. But the question is about tragedy. He's got the ultimate back available. He is on this side of the map. Is he going to go over and try to interrupt the attempt to take the lizard? Strategy strikes down the slightest bit of CS here, but definitely made the best out of bad situations early on. That invade on the top side of the map looking a little bit inconsequential now, and definitely had the opportunity to go for maybe a contestation of the drag that is inside. Instead, decided to path up top side, maybe look for the Rift Herald here. This is definitely diverging away from the timeline we saw play out last game. The Rift Herald and First Dragon were both going over to the side of Glacial Yellow at that time. They were probably already up around 5-0 so this is definitely looking a lot better for Kegamos and it'll be interesting to see how they're going to push this advantage that they've started to develop yeah both mid laners have left lane it is going to be vigorous coming up towards the top side looks like he's spotted here this is a three-man attempted gank on towards Roy she's going to use the ultimate to just try to avoid it and will be able to get out of there for now Encore comes on through but there is no follow-up Roy survives there absorbs two ultimates just hangs out at about half of his HP and meanwhile, this is an opportunity for Tribute now to push in the mid lane. Should be able to get himself a plate off of this. Yeah, Seraphine just not doing damage there. And as Royce, you have to both breathe a sigh of relief and after a little bit of consideration, realize that you're very happy with what just happened there. Drawing three people to the top side of the map, just being able to sit under the tower there, not losing a whole lot and drawing so many resources going to be super valuable, especially as we do have the Rift Herald up still on the top side of the map. He's going to take it back, but someone has taken a beating in that bush down there. Yeah, but this is Sheikah all alone, getting collapsed on by three. Undead Falcon's going to be able to pick up that kill. Turret plate falls in the mid lane, but now Tribute finds himself in a one versus four. Going to have to use the ultimate. Good. Get on out of there. Uses the Spirit Rush. Avoids for now. Takes a little bit of a bomb, but will be able to stay alive. Now two versus one in the bottom lane. Squid Sauce and Soup Fan trying to pressure their advantage. But this is Ezreal. He can hang out far away and just farm with his Q all day long. Does not feel threatened at all. 
It's going to be another nice play there by Kegamos fanboys. Get themselves more gold onto their Gwen off the back of a mistake from Sheikah. Yeah, perhaps a might bit of overconfidence on the side of Glacial Esports Yellow as we move into the 10-minute mark within this game here. Ari definitely a little bit too far up. Should have been aware of what was going on in that topside pixel bush and realized that they didn't have a jungle to back them up and realized where all four members of Kegamos were going to be pathing right after the cleanup on Rek'Sai was done there, just barely able to make it out with their life. Once again, though, think about what would have happened there if Roy hadn't taken those ultimates on the top side of the map we would have had a dead fox girl and a dead void monster really would have there oh chica going to be the only one who ends up losing their life as a result of this play still going for the prowler's claw build though not dissuaded by the zero and two start by any means roish having a great lane in the top lane 30 cs lead for himself but it's getting harder and harder to really bully this Gwen. It's kind of stabilized at this 30 difference uh, versus where it was at in the early game where it was just growing more and more. Gets a nice trade there out of the Gwen, but now actually not going for the Rift Herald early at all, going full armor here. So looking to take as little damage from Royce as possible as Undead Falcons, but not going to be able to regenerate too much uh, of the damage that is taken at the end of the day. But actually, you know, it's so little actually coming on through that Undead Falcons feels just fine. Yeah, you know what they say, tank makes bank. Gwen obviously usually going for a Rift Maker start, but deciding to not to here as an ultimate is going to come out from Roish. Yeah, Roish gets a fair bit of damage there with that Fate Seal. Now looking for the one versus one, the regeneration from the ultimate. Not going to be enough for Undead Falcons. Trying to use the needlework to get back up to full HP. Not going to get it all the way there, though. And that's a solo kill for Roish in the top lane. Forces the Gwen to go a little bit over aggressive there. Knows his limits, knows that he wins that one and will come on out better for it. Yeah, and it might be a little bit too early to talk about itemization, but we were just saying how Gwen has opted for this very tanky early build, only really having an amplifying tome right there as a source of increased damage. And that kind of came through in a troublesome manner right there. Roish was able to take two or even three shots of needlework coming from on Undead Falcons and in turn still emerged alive right there. Remember, Falcons also had to, has a combat summoner spell, had to expend it early. Early. It's now back up, but this is not really showing the kind of early game aggression that Falcons really wanted from that side of the map. 2-1 Yone, obviously going to be scary, but at the same time, Kegamos fanboys definitely do have advantages elsewhere. That's going to be lightning crash blown for Soup Fan, taking a bunch of damage there, getting Kegamos very low. Ahem is there with the Resurrect, so not feeling too threatened, but Soup Fan certainly going to push the damage where he has it, chases forward, forces them back away from the wave. Feeling pretty strong there on the Zeri, although not quite going to be able to close out up against that Essence Reaver Ezreal. Essence Reaver being completed on both sides. This is a build we've seen out of Gwen in both games rather than going for that Triforce into Black Cleaver build that was powerful before 12.4 came out. Oh, that's a root oh. coming down. Oh, top eight, a big ultimate coming through. That is a dead tribute there. Nice setup from Vigorous. Gets the root there from that beat drop. Gets the ulti coming on across to keep him locked down and has tragedy strikes for the additional damage. Easy pick up there as Shika Gaming going in aggressively on a tragedy here. That's going to be the Zillion ultimate used so they can't even chase down for the rest of the damage. Now forced to flash away. Completely nullifying that play there for a hem. It looked like a good start off for Shika to be able to one shot the Hecarim, but doesn't even want to finish the job with the chrono shift coming on through so now tragedy strikes while pretty low it is pretty much just matching shiku who has to go for the recall and that's going to be the first dragon going on over here to the side of kegamos tragedy almost striking for sure on the side of kegamos they're face checking that bush but the strength of the enchanter is both backing up that hecker and means that the chrono shift is going to keep heck alive and almost rexai going down for a third time in turn one dragon apiece now and with the bandal glass mirror being the confirmed buy on the side of seraphine this early on i think that we're going to be looking at this double enchanter setup really trying to support undead falcons and tragedy strikes until Kegamos can fully come online. Soup fan going in with the crash down here, or the uh, lightning crash rather, forcing back these duo. Kegamos going to also be forced to use the heal there. So much power in the 2v2 here from this side of Glacial Esports Yellow. They can't really deny too much farm from the Ezreal. He's far too safe for that. Uh, but they can continuously force them out of the back foot and get themselves some priority. 
looking forward to seeing what they can do with that on later dragons but so far they were not able to net the second one due to that mishap earlier on i want to see if they can get lulu out of the lane if they can get soup fan roaming around with all this movement speed to really try to actually make something happen with that advantage because as of yet they have not been able to do that yeah, there's advantages to be had all over the map, and the question of capitalization is going to become more and more apparent as this game goes forward here. Yone with a big CS gap in the top side of the map is one of those advantages that Glacial Esports really has to look for here. Gwen, though, deciding to stick with that Bramble Vest early on, but also buying a Leeching Leer and might be a pivot over to the Rift Maker for them, given the fact that the Amplifying Tome has been built into that item here. We may be still seeing Gwen going for a more typical build path here, was just trying to find a little bit of defensiveness in lane, and that's something that I'm actually pretty happy to see here. Frankly, I kind of want Kegamos fans here to really trust their carries, and speaking of trust, here we go in for a fight. Tribute heading for the hills here going to be able to stay alive. That's teleport being channeled by Royce But he's just gonna get locked down instantly goes in for the fate sealed He's just gonna get one shot there tragedy strike stays alive doesn't get that chrono shift popped, but gets it utilized nonetheless and that's a one for zero picked up for the side of Kegamos fanboys they cannot be going for these sorts of plays when there's a zillion on the other team and with all the amount of lockdown they have set up for themselves Royce just goes right in the middle of them yeah, I was talking about how it'd be good to trust the two supports that you have from Kegamos, and I think that that's actually coming through pretty darn well right there. We had damage being put out by Royce, the ultimate being dropped, but they just could not do anything given the fact that Seraphine still had her ult up, the fact that Zillion was in the area to continuously slow and interrupt any of a fight coming through, and that's one more kill getting stacked up onto the side of Kegamos fanboys, who are notably a little bit behind in goal, about 2k down right now. Now, but given the way that they have been coordinating and the way that they have been matching the fights and proposals given away by Glacial, I think that we're going to be seeing those fortunes shift as we move into a crucial moment here. Big fight coming through. Big knockup landed there onto a hem, but they're not going to chase any farther. They know that they've got more members for the side of Kegamos fanboys waiting around in the wings here, but really like the Glacial Esports now are setting up for the 1-3-1. They're really trying to abuse the side lane advantages they have for their Yone Kegamos. Going to be forced to Arcane shift away there. Ahem getting chased away as well. You know, you can see that the weakness here of the Kegamos fanboys comp, especially in this mid-game, is that they don't have too much damage individually, at least not yet. Eventually, Gwen will have plenty of damage individually, but until they get to that point, they're really struggling in these side lanes. The Ari and the Yone are going to be able to keep them pushed in. You're going to need to send so many members to really be able to get up and deal with them, and that's when Glacial Esports can have their opportunity to take some objectives. But here, we've got a 2v2 in the top lane. Tragedy Strike's getting engaged on, but it's going to be the Chrono Shift coming on through once again. Shika Gaming going to be able to pick that one on up, but that's a double kill coming on through to the side of Royce and the Zillion just was not enough this time around. Triple kill coming on through for Royce's Yone, and it's going to be a three for one for Glacial Esports yellow they are the stronger team they have equal members they come out on top Ooh, that is not what you want to see if you're Kegamos fanboys right there. You had what looked to be a good engage, that Rek'Sai getting down pretty fast, even with the utilization of Prowler's Claw in that fight. It just didn't matter ultimately, though. Rek'Sai did what she needed to do, and in turn, you had Royce pop off, get that triple kill coming through, um, and the roles of the champions are really starting to become defined here. You get that shield bow already done. You have, once again, another hole breaker being built on a top laner in this series and you have the ability for a lockdown to occur really steadily with both the presence of lulu and ari as we begin to move on deeper into this mid game a dragon is spawning we got five on the side of kegamos fanboys here this is where they're going to look to make their stand and perhaps catch back up after that big battle on the top side yeah, this belongs to Kegamos. Royce is top lane and has no teleports. They are going to end up giving this one on up. Second Dragon goes over to the side of the fanboys. Tribute maybe up a little bit too far. Going to have to back away. Are the weaker side of the map at this point. They're giving time for Royce to be able to go up in the top lane. Try to take out this inner turret. Continue to build up his CS lead. He's 5-2 and two on this Yone. And once the teleport's back up, he's going to have some magnificent flanks. Assuming he doesn't get collapsed on the way that he did earlier. They just want to keep this Yone ahead uh, and keep this Yone stacking up. The hole breaker is completed now as well. This guy is untouchable in the side lanes. We are starting to see as well developments occur on the dimension of itemization here. And there's a few 
Definitely interesting, interesting things to talk about here. One of the things is that Squid Sauce has opted to rush that Chemtech Putrefire on the Lulu here. Really important against champions like the uh, Gwen combined with the Prowess and Propensity to heal and continue to shield with uh, Seraphine completing that Moonstone Renewer. Going to be really, really valuable as we move deeper on into team fights. Meanwhile, Yone's choice of a Hole Breaker is something that I want to discuss here just because I've always viewed his role especially in the hands of Roish as being a champion that is able to take big team fights like what we just saw earlier going for Riftmaker which obviously falls off in efficacy when around other members of his team might not be the best selection here just because it is the fact that we want to be seeing the side of Glacial build up for these big fights and continuously press for objectives going forward. They are now down a dragon here, and I'm not sure whether or not the split push approach is going to be their most valuable. Yeah, if they feel like it's tough to five versus five against the Seraphine, against the Hecarim, understandable, and especially given the uh, the threat that that Zillion brings to the table. But here's what they can do now with that side lane pressure. Using the whole Breaker Yone in the bottom lane, they can start out up this Baron. They know that there are multiple members trying to stop them here. That's a big true shot barrage, though. Gets Sheikah very low, gets Squid Sauce very low. It means that they have to cut their Baron plans short. But in the bottom lane, Royce is still pushing up here. They left just Tragedy with him. Tragedy cannot stand up to that Yone. Down two levels and substantially uh, more stats uh, as that hole breaker represents nearly 200% gold efficiency when you're isolated. Uh, so he's just going to be hammering in on that bot lane inner turret. Going to be a little bit before Falcons shows up. They lose about half its HP. Yeah, we had Royce sitting in bush right there, waiting for everyone to move away before continuing to pressure. We do have a threat against Tribute to Kin up here on the top side of the map with Zillion and Hecarim in the area. Yeah, Tribute gets engaged on there, has to expend the ultimate, gets a good amount of a trade back onto Tragedy, chunk him down to about half HP. They're looking to just keep this play going while Royce continuing to siege in the bottom lane. Much stronger than Falcons in the one versus one, has a two level lead, gonna dive on in here, trying to get those trades on in. And as you can see, it comes out favorably, but it's very difficult to force the Gwen out of lane, especially now that she has the Rift Maker done to heal back on up on these minions. Perhaps I spoke a little bit too soon. Glacial heard me with my talk of that uh, hole breaker and immediately said, hold my beer, watch what I can do in that bot side of the map. And Royce still just in the area, going on three or four minutes without a back, just continuously surging that, uh, uh, sieging that bot side turret really showing the value of that item and the advantage that Royce has been able to establish throughout the early part of the game coming through here. Yeah, and he is just praying that somebody, that they send a second member to go and try to deal with him. He wants Tragedy Strikes to show up down here and go for a gank because Glacial Esports Yellow, A, can start up the Baron, and B, uh, can peel away from the Baron and get it engaged so effectively. They've got this Ari, they've got this Zeri, they've got this uh, Lulu to speed them all up. They can go in for these engages so quickly uh, and get on to the remaining three anytime the two get committed towards the bot lane. Roish finally gets that inner turret, is now taking this 1v1 up against Undead Falcons. Has not worked out the way he was hoping for, though. Gets kind of stuck there in the middle of the mist. Survives thanks to his shield coming on through from the shield bow. That's going to be the true shot barrage coming out across the map and a big shutdown picked up for undead falcons there with an assist in the 1v1 there is a reason why blue side is called kegamos fanboys kegamos getting two great true shot barrages in the course of about three or so minutes here able to stop a baron and able to stop a big boy yone coming through ie now completed though yone going to be an ever more developing threat here definitely happy to get that bot side turret down as well here so it is the case that we are still going to be moving with relative gold and advantage parity on either side of the map now. Seven seconds before this Hextech Drake spawns, the client still hasn't given us a symbol in the top left corner, unfortunately. But this will be another one to be contested here, but you have a lot more priority on the side of Kegamos as the teleport comes in and a potential fight is to be had. Looking to break out onto this one. That's going to be the wreck side in the middle of everybody. Blue team does manage to finish that off the dragon, but what of the fight following up? Lulu gets one shot as it does the wreck side. She cuts Squid Sauce, not going to be able to join in for the rest of the fight, but what about Roy, who snaps back into the middle of the fight and just gets taken on out? It's a three for zero so far. Finally, Tribute's going to be able to finish off one, but Zeri is popping off in the fight. Soup fan has already picked up two, and now looking to chase even farther. Tribute going to be able to finish off that kill onto Vigorous. Going to be able to chase after Kegamos as well. It's a triple kill for Tribute's Ari, and in a two versus five, if 
effectively. Glacial Esports Yellow, turn it back around. <laughs> I'll take that any day of the week. You can have the Hex take Drake. Let me have these turrets mid. Let me have this priority to go for a Baron. Glacial coming out really happily in that fight, really starting to leverage that team fight composition that they have going forward and keeping the right people alive to do the job that needs to be done here. Tribute to a king, locking down so many people, forcing out the hourglasses from the likes of Gwen. Um, and in turn, you have Zeri just getting that damage going on that ultimate is going to just allow for so much mobility around the fight you had people on either side of the dragon pit you had them running through the jungle and it just did not matter pikachu just running at them able to get those kills down and establishing a huge amount of dominance as you have the rest of kegmas rushing towards that baron making sure that it isn't being taken by the side of glacial yeah tragedy Finds the Lulu, but gets pushed on off, not willing to chase any farther into the enemy jungle. This Baron has to be on everybody's minds now, so it's still three more minutes until the next dragon is going to spawn. Gotta be where Kagamos wants to try to force Glacial into these five-on-fives. They still are not in a position where they can really win in the side lanes, and they were so close to coming out positively there in that five-on-five, -five, but it's just they left the Zeri alone for a little bit too long. She managed to get going. If they could get the engage onto her or onto the Ari, you gotta feel like they do end up winning that one, but Roish had to be the focus as he's already so fed. His tribute threatening a 1v1 there onto the Hecker. I'm going to force him to gallop away as fast as his legs can carry him. Meanwhile, Roish still pushing in the bottom lane, will not budge from that position unless absolutely forced to. And with the four members of Glacial still sitting around this Baron, Kagamos is going to be forced to make a decision here. Yeah, Kegamos, are they going to go back up and try to find a way to get priority over this top side of the map? Uh, try to get vision of Baron. We do have that true shot barrage being dropped by Kegamos. Maybe a little bit early, they won't be able to use that to disengage just in case we do get a grouping around the Baron on the side of Glacial Esports Yellow. Drama in the bot side, though. Roish once again stubbornly sitting there in that lane. Yeah, Roish. Kill. Still trying. To, uh, to get a little bit of a kill there on the Falcons, but Falcons just getting harder and harder to really deal with here in this sideline. He's still got the level advantage. He's still got the item advantage, so he's not really too worried about being 1v1 like he was earlier. A lot has to go wrong for that to end up working out that way, uh, and hopefully he's learned his lesson for his own sake. But, but meanwhile, this team's starting on off the Baron. They feel like uh, in this 4v4, they might be favored. Supang going to get engaged now, but just going to throw down the lightning crash and is threatening to just solo out Hecarim here. Zillion forced to ulti himself. Ahem going to end up falling down here sooner rather than later, speeding out there as fast as he can. A tribute to a kid coming over the wall, going to just get the one shot there onto Zillion. Now it's only three members left. Kagamos left alone here, going to get jumped on by the Ari. That's another charm coming on through on two tragedy strikes. A tribute has carried this fight magnificently, just dancing through the entire enemy team, getting all the charms getting all the damage four kills picked up there for glacial esports yellow and they're gonna get the baron that is most definitely a baron royce sitting here in the bot side realizing that he's done his job magnificently by just preventing the gwen from ever being in lane and now look at that the ultimate coming through going to wipe off that last member a true ace coming through for the side of glacial esports yellow the next is in is in danger and it's only going to get worse from here on out as the baron is going to fall that's a morale diff right there coming in from Royce. You know, when when the teams are, are close to even footing, he cannot win the 1v1 against Gwen. But now that his team just picked up a 4v4 uh, near ace, now he can win the 1v1 up against Gwen. Takes her out there, is going to be able to start pushing out a Nexus turrets, takes out an inhibitor. Tribute going to be able to get one as well. And now this base is just in shambles here for the side of Kegamos fanboys. And look at the itemization we've seen out of the Ari. They were confident. Um, tribute to Akin buying that Medjai Soul Stealer before the stacks could even come through for that item, knowing that they would be able to get a good team fight going and realizing that the snowball truly is real on the side of Glacial Esports Yellow. The fact that they also decided to go for that Leandris oh. into Shadow Flame is representative of a lot. And we're going to see that play out here as we may be getting another fight coming through here. Sheikah Gaming waiting in bush here. And we have Soup Fan kind of pincering throughout on the other side, clearing out the vision as we wait to see whether or not a soul will be taken by Kegamos fans. Yeah, Chica really nearly getting bitten there by the Tremor Sense is now going to get engaged on. That's actually going to be Tribute going unstoppable. He manages to get in onto that Zillion. 
Chrono Shift going to resurrect there on to a member. It's going to be Tragedy, but Tragedy just gets picked up right off the bat. It's going to be a triple kill coming on through here for Tribute. Tribute is looking for the Pentakill here. Has lost quite a few teammates. Chica is still alive, but that's the Pentakill picked up there for Tribute to a kid. Just constantly dashing in, dashing out, throwing out, out the orbs of deception. And over the course of the last uh, five or eight minutes has just completely dominated his game basically 1v9 and is going to net this series victory for the side of glacial esports yellow tribute on the ari what can't he do here i cannot believe that pentakill came through for tribute to a kin right there i really thought the gwen sitting there all nice and comfy in the hall of mist had a chance to take down the victory for glacial esports yellow in this series congratulations to them we talked to the owner of the team earlier on um and they basically told us hey we're here to win it all we understand that we may have had a rough start but we're getting our team truly together now and we are looking to take it all we are confident that this series is in our hands and it looks like their fates are beginning to turn right there incredible emphatic performance in both of those games yeah, absolutely here. A, a fantastic tribute, uh, or a fantastic series from Tribute uh, all around here as just, you know, beautiful Zoe game in game number one, beautiful Ari game in game number two. Completely ran away with it in both games there by the end. Uh, and, you know, uh, the whole team really coming together there uh, in the early games for both games, uh, for the entirety of the game in game number one. But... Uh, yeah, just really being the difference maker in these last couple of fights. Huge shout out to him in particular. But uh, yeah, huge shout out to Glacial Esports in general, though. You know, these were some difficult drafts to play out, especially the second one with uh, the lack of a real front line other than what the uh, what the Lulu brings to the table. Uh, but they navigated the fights well and they end up coming out on top. And so many smart decisions were made by Glacial Esports Yellow through both games here. Ari deciding to go for that not fully tank busting build but high damage but over the course of a fight build really was valuable there it was that decision maker in that last fight as the heckerman gwen were the remaining members of kegamos fanboys they were able to stand strong and continue to fight that out with the help of the shadow flame with the help of the leandry's torment both of those items doing wonders against the big health bars and the resistances that those two champions brought to the table and at the same time you just had a capitalization on the weaknesses that Kegamos uh, came through with. We talked a little bit before the game actually began in that drafting phase over how the Seraphine is going to play out and whether or not their presence is going to be a deciding factor here. And I think that what we saw was a turning of favors in fights in which Seraphine was able to land a multi-man ult, but it ultimately wasn't enough, frankly. And this was due to the combination of not only was Seraphine unable to reliably hit skill shots, which is a challenge for any player, regardless of regardless of level of skill, especially against such a hyper mobile team as we saw out of the likes of Ari, Yone, and, and uh, Zeri on the side of Glacial Esports Yellow. But also, it was partially due to the fact that Gwen was just simply not there to follow up in a lot of these engages before we moved into this final battle, right? Yone going with that hole breaker rush, getting that shield bow and ie just a monstrous presence in the side lane that perpetually drew away the top lane from the side of kegamos down into that bot there at the end staying there for full five minutes at a time or so it was just a matter of whether or not glacial was able to push the right buttons and it looks like they got the advantage that they wanted yeah absolutely great game great series here from the side of glacial esports yellow you know coming in with a little bit of doubt uh on them given that they needed to come in with these emergency substitutes given that they were going to get these ban penalties but they navigated the drafts effectively they navigated the games effectively and they come on out here with a nice clean two and zero win over kegamos fanboys that's going to be feeling really good here for this squad coming in to the league as one of those higher rated teams based on player rank on its own uh and then having to go down one and two having all these roster difficulties over the first couple of weeks really feels good to separate yourself from that big pack of five teams sitting at one and two advance up to two and two and be that much closer towards uh, guaranteeing yourself a spot in the top six and a spot in those play-ins 
Yeah, from all of us here today with Aegis, for those of you just turning in, you have been watching the Aegis Vanguard League here, and we have had Glacial Esports Yellow go up 2-0 versus Kegamos Fanboys, and unfortunately that will be all for us tonight we will have a raid coming through and we will be getting you guys to another channel for those of you who want who want more great esports action going forward but for the time being we over here are going to be signing off i'm Yarko. i'm gordo and from simulcrum on production have yourselves a fantastic night